On the morning of June 30th, 1908, humanity got a harsh reminder of its position in the universe. Although we live our day-to-day -day lives without much thought of the cosmic forces surrounding our planet, this doesn't mean that we live in a vacuum. Thousands of objects enter the Earth's atmosphere every year, and we're usually lucky enough to be none the wiser. But what happened on that day, more than a century ago, still perplexes us. The only certainty we have is that the destruction and fallout that took place in the far reaches of eastern Siberia could have been much, much worse. This is the story of the Tunguska event, the disaster that disappeared. Due to the time period and remote location where the Tunguska event took place, the only accounts of the explosion itself are from first-hand survivors that were lucky enough to live through the event. First off was a man enjoying his breakfast on the porch of a ranger station in an isolated region of East Siberia. It was early morning, approximately 7.14 a.m., and the sun had just begun to creep over the horizon's edge. Suddenly, this calm morning was transformed into something much more terrifying. The ranger claimed that he saw the horizon split into two, with a long column of bluish fire moving across the sky. First came the warmth, a sudden burst of heat rising all around him. He wanted to run to get away, but he was too absorbed in what was happening before his eyes. The earth began to shake, and just as the explosion happened, the blue fireball vanished. It seemed to leave only a long plume of smoke behind. Then came the noise. The man felt an incredible force fling his body away from where he was sitting. His wife was inside at the time and ran out to grab him in an attempt to get him to safety. The explosion shook the world around them, one last time, and then it was over. As they looked around, they saw how the deafening noise had shattered the windows of the ranger station. Another case which actually resulted in a casualty came from Akulina, a woman from a local tribe in the area. She spoke of waking from her sleep to a brilliant blue light blinding her and her husband. When they attempted to flee, a whirlwind started to throw them around. After losing consciousness for a few seconds, she opened her eyes to see her husband being slammed by the invisible force against a nearby tree. He would die from his injuries just a few hours later. Akulina's husband is one of three reported people to have died in the incident, but due to the remoteness of the area, paired with many of the tribes being isolated from society, the true death toll is most likely much higher. As the newspapers began to report the incident, what was immediately clear was the incredible reach of this mysterious explosion. Eyewitness reports seemed to stretch across most of Siberia and Russia, but it was even detected thousands of miles away. In the UK and Germany, it read clearly on seismic detectors, and even clocked in at a 5.2 on the Richter scale from nearby detectors. Even as far as Washington, D.C., people recorded evidence of what happened on the morning of June 30th, 1908. Monitoring systems picked up the same whirlwind that had flung the ranger from his porch, and data pointed to a sudden rise in air dispersion, indicating a massive burst. Whatever happened was powerful enough to make waves across the globe. Despite all of this, figuring out exactly what actually happened presented numerous challenges. The event took place in the near banks of the Tunguska River, which was a sparsely populated area. Most of this was due to the inhospitality of the region, with temperatures in the winter falling dramatically. In absence of a clear answer to what happened, it became simply known as the Tunguska event, based on where it happened. Today, the Tunguska event continues to fascinate everyone from astrophysicists to conspiracy theorists. The leading theory surrounding the mystery was that it was an asteroid or comet. Of course, Earth is no stranger to anomalies crashing from space, with instances recorded since pre-modern history. This theory makes even more sense given how large Siberia is. If something were to crash into the planet, Siberia is 5 million of square mile odds. Even if the Tunguska event was terrifying to those who experienced it firsthand, we now know that it wouldn't necessarily be a total outlier in history. That is, of course, except for one issue. Whatever it is that crashed down at Tunguska left no crater, no visible sign that it was a comet or asteroid. So what could this strange object have been? Let's go back to the beginning. 
It turns out that the dramatic blue fireball wasn't the end of the event's reach. In the weeks following, hundreds of people reported seeing lights in the sky. This glow was bright enough that individuals could take clear, brightly lit photographs in the middle of the night. One man even reported sitting on his porch in the middle of the night, reading his newspapers with just the glow from the sky. For a time after the event, the line between day and night seemed to blur, with reports of the phenomenon reaching as far as Asia. In an attempt to uncover what happened, an expedition into the region was planned. It took almost two decades following 1908 before Russian mineralogist Leonid Kulik was able to find the location of the impact. Kulik had been campaigning to secure funding for his research expedition ever since the event happened. In 1921, he led a Soviet team who were among the first to collect eyewitness reports. This is where the report from the ranger who was flung up from his porch was documented. The team was unable to find the impact zone on their first trip, largely thanks to poor weather conditions. After a difficult second expedition, in 1927, they reached something that could have been the impact zone, with the assistance of some local tribes. Something that by all accounts should have been the impact zone. But if it was a meteor or comet that crashed into Earth, as some researchers in the expedition were expecting, it didn't leave a crater. Flat land greeted them where they expected to find a crater. The only evidence that this was in fact the impact zone was in the trees. Eerie photographs of what the research team found now mark the memory of the Tunguska event. Millions of trees had been scorched and knocked away from an epicenter in a radial pattern. The direction they faced away from, paired with the corroboration of reports, made it clear that this was in fact the correct location. In the center of the site was a square mile area that had leveled more than 80 million trees. A decimated taiga forest surrounding a flat plain, not a colossal crater, was just about the last thing that Kulik and his party expected to discover. Kulik himself was confused by what he had found, but he didn't leave empty-handed. Because of the physical proof in the leveled trees, his team could begin calculating what had really happened. What they discovered disturbed them, and still, to this day, is under debate by astronomers. Whatever came down from the skies over the Tunguska River was large enough to have devastated a large city. It was estimated to be between 50 and 100 meters in size, going off of Kulik's calculations. The object wasn't like those that came before it after all. If things had happened differently and the object did hit the Earth, things could have been much, much worse. It was apparent that if the Tunguska object was this size, it wouldn't have needed to hit the Earth to cause devastating destruction. Just the scorched tree line alone was the size of Tokyo. Anywhere else in the world, the sheer amount of devastation that surrounded the phantom impact zone could have caused a mass death situation. It could have leveled towns, it could have wiped entire cities off the face of history. And still, the lingering question from Kulik's expedition, why wasn't there an impact zone? If you do any amount of research into the Tunguska event, you'll find many rabbit holes to fall into. Theories ranging from a meteor to nuclear bombs and even aliens have been proposed. Let's start by taking a look at the more promising theories. The most plausible theory is that the event was the result of a comet or asteroid. The biggest issue with this theory for Kulik was the absence of a crater at the disaster site, but over the years an explanation has emerged for why there might not be one. The leading reasoning behind this is that the comet or asteroid burned up during the entry into Earth's atmosphere. These final dramatic explosions, when the object is finally decimated by the force, are referred to as airbursts, and this theory would explain most of the first-hand reports from the event. The same story ran through all the eyewitness reports. A devastating roar as the bluish fire crashed down, and after it shot into the horizon and began to get quieter, all the documented witnesses spoke of a second, louder explosion, a shockwave from the airbursts. The explanation also makes even more sense when comparing it to a confirmed airburst event, one that happened in our lifetimes. The Chelyabinsk event of 2013 was the most widely witnessed incident of an object crashing down to Earth. It was almost like history repeating itself. Witnesses reported being blinded by a bright blue light as something came crashing down. Unlike the Tunguska event, 
The Chelyabinsk meteor that exploded 14 miles above Earth was recorded by dash cams and cell phones. Also unlike Tunguska, the catastrophe didn't happen somewhere remote. Although no fatalities were reported, around 1,500 people were injured by the final shockwave. Mark Boslow, a physicist and researcher at the Los Alamos National Library, is an expert on asteroid collision theory. He has written multiple papers on Tunguska in light of the 2013 event. One of the things he notes in his research is that Tunguska should have left some semblance of physical evidence behind when Kuluk discovered the area. Either large chunks of iron or more disturbance to the flat landscape should have been immediately obvious. He called for other astronomers to take the 2013 event as a reason to reinvestigate Tunguska in full. The calls from Boslo and other scientists seem to pay off, with interest reignited in the Tunguska event after the 2013 meteor incident. We might be getting closer to some evidence of what the object might have been. Small collections of material that date back far enough to be consistent with the 1908 event have now been found in the area, but we're still not 100% sure of the composition of the object. An alternative theory comes from astrophysicist Wolfgang Kunt, who proposed that an eruption of natural gas from within the Earth's core could have been the cause of the devastation. Wolfgang believed that natural gas stored deep within the Earth's core could have expanded to a breaking point that caused a huge explosion. The reasoning behind his theory came from the original lack of physical evidence of a meteor and the pattern in which the trees fell back. However, this theory has not gotten much traction over the years. Another theory that's gained a following comes from Alexander Kazanchev in the 1950s. When he had visited Hiroshima in 1945, he noticed that the nuclear blast had decimated the surrounding tree lines, ripping off their branches and leaves in a similar way to what had happened in Tunguska. The nuclear fireball had been powerful enough to fling cars miles away from the impact zone, but most of the trees closest to the blast stood disturbed and charred, but not uprooted. Kazanchev proposed that the event could be explained by nuclear origins. However, he proposed that this was due to some sort of extraterrestrial spacecraft or an atomic weapon constructed outside our realm of understanding. His theory would be ridiculed for its dependence on extraterrestrials to explain the event. But regardless, he captured the public's imagination and drew attention from fringe skeptics to provide alternative explanations for the strange event. Other theories that gained popularity over the years come from some believing that the event was the result of a black hole colliding with the Earth, or even that it could be evidence of a glitch in the Matrix. More grounded fringe theories cite everything from a secret mining disaster to a planned testing operation by the Soviets. It seems that the most plausible of all of these remains the asteroid slash comet theory. The evidence that it may have been an airburst is the most convincing, and yet, we still don't even know whether it was an asteroid or comet. This will depend entirely on the composition of the object, and more than a century later, it seems like we may never have a definitive answer. Even if this was the case, and Tunguska was just an asteroid or comet that exploded right before it hit the surface of the Earth, it doesn't make the situation any less disturbing. The Tunguska object had the potential to change human history if it would have landed in a different spot. As the 2013 meteor footage now shows us clearly, it could have happened in a much more populated area. Today, some scientists claim that Tunguska was much smaller and less destructive than originally thought. They dispute Kulik's initial calculations of its size. Boslo is among those who fall into this camp, but he doesn't argue that Tunguska was insignificant. If Tunguska got as close to the planet as it did, Boslow suggests that it must have been small enough to get decimated by the force of the atmosphere. Some say Tunguska was much closer to the size of the 2013 meteor, but the 2013 meteor, by all previous calculations, was far more catastrophic than it should have been. Boslow and multiple other scientists are actively saying that the 2013 event points to the fact that airbursts from foreign objects entering the atmosphere can be even more dangerous than those that make a touchdown. The Tunguska object being closer to the size of the 2013 meteor should have been a relief. Instead, scientists like Boslow point to the devastation seen in the 2013 meteor and suggest 
that it's time for a robust global warning system for objects entering the atmosphere. The Tunguska event remains a harsh reminder that we do not live in a floating vacuum. Every day, thousands of smaller objects crash into our atmosphere, and scientists are now rediscovering Tunguska's significance. It shows how much we might have underestimated the dangers of even smaller objects entering our atmosphere, and it points to our only certainty that eventually there will be another event like Tunguska. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video, and have a good night. Thank <laughs> you.